I want to share again one of the simplest inquiries that is helpful in this. the vastness of consciousness. It might for many just be words. Initially can be kind of understood as a concept, but the embodiment is a feeling. A feeling of what it feels like to be free of the weight, the veil, the heaviness of whatever story we're suffering under, we are experiencing. So I wanna share one of the inquiries that uh, I've sat with for a long time that has been quite valuable. And even if you've heard some of these meditations or analogies before, every time I hear them, it's like, oh, that's right. That's that's right. I feel into the truth that the analogy is pointing to. And remember, there is no truth in the teachings, zero. They are pointing to a truth that has to be experienced The the truth is in the experience, not in the words, not in the concepts, and not in the teachings. So we do recognize perhaps that There are things that are transient and come and go. But there is something that is unwavering. And it's called awareness. And a way to feel into that is the analogy of the movie playing upon the movie screen and recognizing that without the movie screen, the movie could not be experienced. Without the movie screen, the movie could not be experienced. And the movie screen is blank. It is present. It allows whatever the movie is to play and the movie screen does not change. And if the movie, which is like our 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 story of self, our dream of self. If that movie changes, the movie screen is not perturbed. Let's say the movie playing is a, is just a total horror flick, <laughs> a very disturbing movie, and it's playing. And the movie is the movie screen is allowing that and watching that and being with that. And then the movie changes from being an absolute horror flick to a romantic comedy. Just just changes, just like that. The screen doesn't go, whoa, hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. I'm still reeling from that whole horror flick thing. You, 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 gotta, you gotta give me a minute. You gotta give me some time to adjust. No, the screen is just there. It's just present. Oh, it changed. Okay, now I'm with that. Oh, it changed again. Now I'm with that. So there's a grace. There's a stability. There's a stillness that is present to witness any movie that is playing and it has to be there to experience the movie if you look out the window and you look at the sky you notice that there are or are not clouds or there's different configurations of clouds and the clouds come and go and beyond the clouds there is a sky and it has to be there for the clouds to come and go Its presence is necessary to hold space for the coming and going of clouds and weather and hurricanes and storms 
and beautiful sunsets and misty mornings, all that comes and goes and shifts and changes within an unchanging presence of sky. So how does that relate to our experience? We come to recognize, think about it, feel into it for yourselves. Have you ever had a singular thought that has been present every moment of your life? No. You've never had a single thought that's been there every second. Maybe you've had a thought that's there a lot, <clears throat> a lot but it's not there every second, which means it comes and goes. Have you ever had a singular emotion that has been there every second? Again, you might have an emotion or a state of mind that is predominant. Maybe there's an anxiety, but it wavers and it shifts and it's more or less anxious and sometimes it's not there. So it comes and goes. So just like there has to be a movie screen that doesn't move in order to experience the movie, and there has to be a predominance of an unwavering presence of sky to hold space for and witness the changing weather, what has to be present so that every emotion and thought and feeling and sensation that arises and passes can be known. Peace, which is an inadequate word for awareness, consciousness, which is our inadequate words for the grace of God, which are inadequate words <laughs> for the beingness there's always inadequate words, but there's something that it has to be there. You can't experience a thought, a feeling, an emotion without the presence of awareness, just like you couldn't experience a movie without the presence of a screen. So the meditation, the opportunity, is to inquire okay i know this now conceptually there's something called awareness presence consciousness that is unmoving unwavering always present within which my thoughts come and go we can learn to gently point our awareness beyond the thoughts and inquire, what is that? What does it feel like, this thing we're calling awareness, consciousness, to move it from a concept to a knowing is to ask, what does it feel like? What is the nature of this unwavering presence that's very much like the sky. What is the nature of this something that is not judging, not assessing, not moving, not rushing toward things it likes and running away from things that it fears because it does not, it is not the realm. Of likes and fears. It is the realm of loving presence, loving awareness. And again, the inquiry is, what is the nature of that? 
Can I feel that somewhere in my presence, in my being? And to recognize, oh, I am that. That's always been there. I've been collapsed into the story of self, into the dream, forgetting there is a dreamer. The dream is so small. The dream is so limited. And mm, typically, uh, doing its own thing. I don't know what the word for that is. It's just like my, in the dark room when my mind made up the room, it's just doing its own thing. What's aware of that? So that's one way, one inquiry into the knowing of our truth is to inquire into what it feels like. And then to play, we can play in our meditation of feeling into that and not budging from it, allowing it to be just a, however it feels, it might feel like peace, it might feel like vastness, it might feel like acceptance. And to play with, if I were not to budge from this, if this was the predominant nature of how I moved through the world, imagine moving through the world and meeting your relationships and meeting your obligations and meeting your challenges as this. When we awaken our authentic peace, we awaken our authentic power. To meet the joys of the world, to meet the darkness of the world, to meet the joys of our soul, to meet the darkness of our soul that wants to be illuminated with love, to meet our pains, to meet our joys, to meet our grief, so that we can have a full life experience feeling the full dimensionality of a life rested in the eternal grace of what we really are. Another inquiry is, to play, let the mind play a little bit. They say you can use a thorn to remove a thorn. We can use the mind to point our awareness beyond the mind. So if I've got a thorn in my arm and I don't have a, my fingers aren't capable of getting it out. I like, God, I, I need a tool. What can, oh, look, here's another thorn and it's perfect. I can use that thorn to remove that thorn. We can use the mind to inquire beyond the mind. So that what that looks like is playing, sitting, resting, and asking, imagining. What would it feel like if I didn't have this whole construct of self? What would it feel like if I didn't have the complication of my story. The noise of my story. The distraction of my story. What would it feel like?
And we are not asking what would life be like. That's way too much thinking and conjecture. It's feeling into, ah, oh, what would it feel like if just for a few minutes, just within a few minutes of this meditation, oh, what if I didn't have this whole story? What if I didn't have a past? What would it feel like? Would I disappear? And play with that. God, I could, what if I completely, even for just a few seconds, what if I completely let go of this whole dream of self, the whole story of self, and just allowed myself to be? Would I disappear? Would I cease to exist? No, something remains, something remains, something remains. What is that? As a feeling, what does it feel like? And we start to come into the realization, the experience that when we imagine this putting down our story for even a few moments, imagining if it just didn't exist, that what is there typically feels peaceful, unburdened. And in that moment to recognize, I am that, oh, oh, there I am. Oh my God, it's been there all along. It's been there all along, covered by a story, veiled, by my programming, my conditioning, my wounding. I don't have to feel shame for that. That's just what happens. But there it is. There I am. Our mind gives us clouded perceptions of God. The heart. The love is not contained in the heart. The heart is the portal to love. Drop down out of the mind into the heart. And rather than trying to find the vastness, the boundless grace of love contained in the heart, it's helpful to recognize the heart is simply an opening. Open the heart, open the heart, open the heart, let go, surrender, drop the defenses, open the heart, soften, and let the universe of love start to move through. Get familiar with that feeling, knowing that I am that. That is the nature of my true imperishable grace of being. And the more we get familiar with that, and the more often we rest in that grace, 
That's called awakening. Each meditation is a new awakening. And the more we awaken into that imperishable grace of being, the more familiar it becomes and the more it stays awake until it is always present, awake, available. And it moves forward as the predominant beingness, the predominant knowing of self. And life comes in, and instead of it immediately meeting our story, life comes in and meets love. Imagine if the eyes were actually right here above the heart and life came in and went directly into the heart. What if life was experienced directly in the heart and then the heart guided a response and simply directed the mind to enact that response? Let the mind be in service to the love that moves through our open hearts. Mm. All right, my dears. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for opening your hearts. The world needs a lot of love. There is a lot of love. The world just needs to do its healing. <laughs> so can we be part of the healing in this time of great division, fear, battle, Can we be the ones who are shining love into every shadow, into every pain, into every wound, and not collapse into the separation of hate, not collapse into the separation of otherness, There's only love. It's just that a lot of it is wounded. So we meet our own wounds. Maybe, hopefully, we can meet the wounds of others and still set our boundaries and encourage love, demand love, hold war as a warrior of love to hold that space but as martin luther king said hate cannot drive out hate only love can do that and darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that but we can't do it unless we're awakening into the true love and the true light of the imperishable grace and vastness of the love that we are. If you like this video and you'd like to see similar content, please subscribe to my channel as well. Click that like button down below and that's gonna make this video more available for more people. And visit me on my website, chessedwards.com. There's a link for that down below. There you are going to find valuable resources for living a conscious, powerful, and peaceful life. As well, you're going to find information there about how to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or how you can build your own custom private immersion retreat, a three-day retreat with me here in Sedona. As well, there's information about upcoming group retreats, virtual retreats, and so much more. I hope to see you there, and I've got a few free gifts for you as well. Thanks for watching.